Hello, how are you? Hopefully you're all good. Excuse the rather severe haircut that I had yesterday. I'm not sure about it, but hey-ho, this is where I am. <laughs> so today we are looking at the serene dress that I am trying to model here. So hopefully you can see there the high-low hem uh, detail at the bottom, which is really nice. And then we have this lovely tie detail at the waist. <clears throat> I am going to go on just to talk about some fitting uh, details for this. But can you see the, how the tie detail, let me undo it, pulls me in there nicely at that point, which is our most um, smallest measurement therefore the most flattering so that's great for if you are like me and you expand during the day you can just let a little bit of slack out uh, and you don't feel so restricted it has a beautiful um wide sleeves that drip fabulously and there are two options there's a v-neck option that i'm wearing today uh, and I'm actually going to make the round neck option. So you're going to see towards the end of the tutorial uh, what the round uh, neck looks like on me. So hopefully you have some fantastic fabric. I am presuming that you have your machine all set up with the correct needle type and you're all ready to go. But first, let's just have a little bit of conversation about fit. Now, there are bust starts uh, in uh, this garment which helps you here. But what I really want you to start to think about in your sewing is the proportions. So I'm quite petite, uh, but actually my legs are not particularly short. It's my body that's short. So you can see that this is my waist, which some people may think is quite high. And people think that this is maybe empire line, which would be up there. But actually, this is my waist. So in the instructions, uh, which I do hope you've got with you, because I want to, you to use both in tandem for the best uh, experience. Um, in the instructions, the first thing it talks about is sizing and, and proportions. So the first proportion you're going to check is this proportion. So from the back of your neck down to your waist. Because if this is too long for what I designed it for, it's going to be cutting you down here and that's not very flattering at all. So I really want you to pay some attention to that measurement and adjust if you need to. And the instructions tell you all how to do that. And then you can consider from your waist down to the floor. And what the instructions say is, if you discover that you need to make any adjustments from the waist down, because it's kind of in two tiers, you've got the ruffle at the bottom and then this section here. What you want to do is to adjust both of them. If I just made the ruffle longer, I change the proportions of the dress and equally if I do the same up here. So there's a line for your hip on the pattern where you can adjust the top section and then you do exactly the same to the bottom. So let's say I am 10 centimetres, four inches, um, longer <laughs> i wish longer here i would simply add two inches or five centimeters here at that hip line and i would then add five centimeters to the hem of that lower skirt i hope that makes sense it's really detailed in the instructions so do spend that time to go through it it honestly it is really worth it because you'll suddenly see that things suit you much better because your proportions are being considered okay I'm going to bring you around and we're going to talk about our first steps. Good luck, guys. See you in a minute. OK, so there's nothing particularly special. I don't think about the locations of all these notches uh, and construction marks. I just want you to make note that you do need to find them all on your pattern pieces because they are all important. Uh, and you have a lining and a main fabric for the bodice. So don't forget you need to do them on both. Uh, I'm going to show you the first steps uh, on the lining fabric that I've chosen because it's easy for you to see, uh, but I will be telling you to repeat it on your main fabric. Um, I will also be showing you just on a mock-up piece how to do the v-neck because it is slightly different. So I'm going to bring you round and we're going to get on with step two, which is stay stitching. So for those of you that don't know, stay stitching does exactly what it says on the tin. So it makes the fabric stay in the shape that you want it to stay in. And it's a temporary stitch. 
Uh, so it's never seen after everything's all stitched together, uh, but it is a very important step, especially if you're using lightweight fabric. That I let me just find some to show you. So lightweight fabric can easily come out of shape. So this is the fabric that I've chosen uh, for the um, main fabric. So that's the front neck curve here. You can imagine that that's going to move and open up whilst I'm stitching. So the stay stitching is to make that do as it's told and stay where it is. So we're going to do all of the necklines, so front and the two back pieces at the neckline location on your lining and your main fabric. So I'll bring you around and show you what that looks like. So here we are, this is the neck edge, the big curve of the front and this is my lining again, just so that it's easier for you to see. I have the edge of the fabric lined up on the one centimetre, so that's the um, three eighths of an inch. Yes, three eighths of an inch. Um, sorry, I can't find my foot under the table. Let me just make a noise. There we go. So yes, we've got our fabric here and we're gonna remember it's a curve that we're stitching. So we're not gonna do that because we create all these bumps and then we're fixing it straight. And we actually want to fix this fabric in the lovely curve that you uh, spent your time cutting. So we're just going through one layer of fabric. We're not stitching two pieces together and we're simply gonna stitch. And we're going to keep along that edge all the way. Okay, so you'll be able to see more that I am feeding the curve in rather than just pulling it straight. Whilst I do this, just take a moment to um, talk to you about lining. So lining really just need to be pressed. Otherwise, it can easily lose its shape because if you press it afterwards, it may grow. And that leads to the other point that the lining needs to be the same size as the actual garment. Otherwise, when you put them together, it's not going to work. So really be accurate with your cutting out on that part. So I'm just coming up to the end. you what it looks like so you can see it is just simply a row of stitching along that curve you're going to do that to the your lining for your bodice at the back just along the neck edge but whilst I have you here I'm just going to show you what that's going to look like when you're doing a v-neck so here is my mock-up v-neck and we're going to do exactly the same process. So we're going to start up at the top at one centimetre and we're just going to go down. What I wanted to show you was what happens at the V because people have a tendency to lose the line when they get to the V. Okay, so I'm hoping you can see this. If I continue to here and then quickly change direction, let's say here, which is probably where lots of people go to, it's actually not the right location. What I want you to imagine is that this stitch line, use the edge of my scissors for a ruler, is gonna continue straight down. So can you see that line is gonna be coming down there and then the other line in the other direction if we continued that one centimeter is going to cross about here so can you see the difference between where we think it is and where it actually is so I want you to consider that when you're doing this and the next step for the V, which is a reinforcing detail. What you can do is draw it on first. So for the reinforcing, I'll show you how to do that. But let's just continue to this point. 
I'm going to go to where it crosses over. I'm going to make sure my needle's in. I'm going to lift the foot up and spin it round. And I'm just checking that this is lined up with the one centimetre. As luck would have it, it is. But if it wasn't, I can simply go back, do one more stitch and try again. So it's better to be shorter than too long. And then we're off. So hopefully you can see I'm still on that one centimetre. Okay. So now we're going to take a look at the reinforcing stitch. So the reinforcing stitch, you should have had a construction mark on there. So I'm just going to add mine because I forgot to do that. And then I'll come back and I'll show you what we need to do at that point. Okay, so here's my construction mark that you would have if you had a V uh, neck. And what we need to do is to reinforce this point, basically. Because when we've attached the line and we're going to cut here, very close to that point and without a reinforcing stitch that's just going to continue and fray so it is an important step and what you need to do is to put your stitch length down to one okay so all the way down to one millimeter and then we're just simply going to stitch along that line again we're not stitching to anything we're just stitching through the one layer of fabric, but you are going to do this on both your lining and on your actual fabric. I've got to that point again and I've turned. Okay, so if you're doing the v-neck version, what you will have at this point is your stay stitching going all the way on the V and then you should have a row of reinforcing stitches which is at one millimeter right to that point and you should have that on both your front and back bodices main fabric and lining when you've done all of that guys I shall meet you back I'll change the camera angle actually because we're going to have a look at the darts what you can see here then is your bodice this is my lining but you are going to do this four times two darts on your lining and two darts on your main fabric you can probably just about see the remnants of my stay stitching here and this is one of the darts <clears throat> so this i find is the best way to do it so it's marked on the wrong side of the fabric and that means we've got a handy line that we can use to follow when we're stitching but the first thing we need to do is to fold it so we're going to take a hold of this point and this point first and I'm just going to fold it over in those locations bring it closer to you then I'm going to take a pin I'm going to put my first pin just on that point then I'm going to go over to this edge and I'm going to be matching this line on this side with the line on the other side and then I'm going to pop a pin. So hopefully you will be able to see that my pin is on the line on that side and it, oh no it isn't. So we're going to check on that side. So it isn't. So we're just going to adjust. until it is okay so we're on the line that side and that side once we've got those two pins what we can do is lay everything flat on the ironing board and just give it a little press make sure you don't press where your marks are because your line might disappear dependent upon what you marked it with okay you can see that that gives us a lovely crisp line now so we can then pin all the way down that line now i'm a bit awkward because i'm on the wrong side but i want my pins to be facing the camera so let me just flip those around 
just makes it easy when I get to the sewing machine. So pop this in. So I'm putting it on the line so that then I can check by flipping it back and you can see that those pins are on the line on the other side. I'm going to take you to the sew machine and I'll show you how to stitch these and then you can get going with the four that you need to do. Right, so when you're doing a dart, we're just stitching a straight line, so it's nothing to be worried about. You can stitch a straight line, so don't be nervous. We don't use any of the guides over here, so we're going to be looking at the needle and making sure we stitch along that white line. We're going to take the pins out at the last moment. We're at our regular two and a half length stitch, and we're just going to simply do our back stitch to start. And then we're going to stitch all the way down this white line. Go nice and steady so that you can be accurate. And then when you start to approach the point, which you will see in a second on screen, we're going to be reducing the stitch length. Okay, so when we're around about two and a half centimetres, one inch from this point here, we're going to reduce our stitch length to one and a half. And we're still accurately following that white line. When we're about a centimetre, half centimetre away, we're going to do it to one. Now, this bit's important. If you find that you're not going to come off at the exact point that you wanted where this pin is you have a decision to make if you're too far over this side then you may have to start again but if you're only slightly going to be different it's important you don't change angles so don't stitch and then go oh hang on a minute and then come in at a blunt angle because you'll have a really strange shaped dart so you want to just gently come off the edge and you're just going to keep because you've got a, a stitch length of one you're just going to keep going until you're no longer stitching on the fabric and that's enough to ensure that it's all knotted and secure so i'll just show you where we are see we come straight off the edge so that's our row of stitching darts need to be pressed correctly so we're going to just go back to the ironing board and I'll show you the last step for the darts and then you can uh, complete the other three. Okay, so there's the dart that we have just stitched and now we need to press it. So the first thing we're going to do is to press it up. I'm going to use a little bit of steam if our fabric takes it. It's important to set your iron to your fabric as well, so don't just use any old setting. Then we're going to flip it down and we're going to press it down because that's the direction it's going to stay uh, when we're, we've finished. But then we're going to flip it over to the right side of the fabric and we're going to do the same process and we're just going to press it downwards, making sure it's all nice and flat. And then here at the bus start, we're just going to do a little bit of a circle at, at the bus point, sorry. So hopefully you can then see if I hold that dart up, how beautiful it looks when it's pressed. So I'm going to leave you to do your other three and then I'm going to see you back at the sewing machine with your two fronts, lining and main fabric and your two backs lining, four backs, two backs for the main and two backs for the lining. And let's get this bodice started. So what you see here is your uh, bodice front. This is the lining, but again, we're gonna repeat this with our actual fabric as well. So you're gonna do this twice, but your the right side of the fabric is facing the ceiling. So you'll see you can only just see the dart because all of the dart is on the table so the right side of the fabric is facing the ceiling you're going to take a hold of your back and you're going to place it 
with the right sides of the fabric facing down. So what you can see here is the wrong side of the fabric. And we're going to match across those top shoulder seams. You've got two of those, so you're going to do exactly the same on the other side. So what we have is, I can see the wrong sides of my lining or my fabric pointing to the ceiling. But if I opened that up, this is the right side of our bodice front. So we're going to pin accurately across the top there. Get my pins. And then we're going to stitch across with a one and a half centimetre seam allowance and we're going to press those seams open. Now, I haven't yet on this video shown you how to press your seams open. And we also haven't talked about seam finishes. So just whilst I do this pinning, I will show you once we've stitched this, how to press the seams open. But what I will say is, as explained in the instructions, Seam finishes are a personal choice and it does depend on the equipment that's available to you. Now, I will be overlocking my seams because I have an overlocker. Um, so I will be telling you when I'm doing that. Because this bodice is fully lined, we don't need to do any overlocking. So don't worry about finishing your seams. I will tell you at what point we're going to do that. OK, so let's get stitched across these shoulders and then we'll be back at the ironing board to show you how to press them open. OK, so I've reset my stitch length to 2.5 because we could have easily been on a one because we've just finished our darts. This is the shoulder seam of the lining uh, that we've pinned and we're just going to line up the edge of the fabric with the one and a half centimetres or the five eighths of an inch. We're going to go and do our back stitch like we always do. And we're going to stitch in a lovely straight line, ensuring we're along the correct one and a half centimetres, five eighths of an inch on the plate. We're going to get to the end and then we're going to do our back stitch again. Now you have this to do four times. So you have two shoulder seams on the lining and two shoulder seams on your main fabric. When you've done all of those, we'll go back to the ironing board and I'll show you how to press them open. So here we are, this is the shoulder seam that we have just uh, stitched. You're gonna use this method wherever the instructions say press the seam open. Uh, and I'm gonna show you why it's important and what it actually does. So pressing is a part of uh, sewing life, I'm afraid. So we do need to get used to it because it really elevates your project. So hopefully I can show you how that works. So a bit like the dart, we're first of all gonna press it in one direction. Then we're gonna press it in the opposite direction. And then we're gonna open it and press it nice and flat. Now, some fabrics, maybe not this one because it's quite lightweight, but some fabrics also appreciate having a little press from the other side, from the right side. My threads have got caught. I'll cut, cut them off later. Having a nice press from that side because it will just take any lumps and bumps out. So hopefully you can see how beautiful that seam looks versus the seam on the other side that I haven't done anything with. Now, you can see it's all lumpy and, 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 and bumpy. And what that means, to me anyway, is it means that your project always looks a bit homemade rather than handmade. And I do think there's a difference between those two descriptions. Um, so really spend time Get into the habit after every seam that you have done, get into the habit of pressing. Now, it may not all be pressed open. It may tell you to press the seams in one direction or another, um, and that's fine. You can uh, do, do exactly what it says, but it's the pressing that is important. Now the fun starts, because we're going to start attaching the lining to the bodice. So you need a bit of space, 
and I need your lining where the shoulders are attached and also your main fabric with the shoulders attached and then we'll go through what the next step is. So what you can see here is your lining that's attached at these shoulder seams. So the right side of the lining is facing us, facing the ceiling. So you can't see any of your seams. I want you to then take your main fabric that should look exactly the same and you're going to lay it on top so that the right sides are facing. So let me explain what I mean. So once I've laid my main fabric over, I should be able to see all of the seams because this is the wrong side of the fabric facing the ceiling, okay? So we have the lining with the right sides of the fabric facing the ceiling. And then we have our main fabric laid on top with the right side of the fabric facing the lining, okay? And then we're simply going to pin, match all the way around that neckline and pin. So I'm going to just come around this other side, oh, sorry, the other side. We're going to start at the notch that's on the back bodice. Now you may think that that's quite low. It's supposed to be low according to my design, but if you think that or feel that that's a little bit too low for you, there is nothing wrong with lifting that up. It should, where it's located, just um, cover your bra strap, um, but you can put it anywhere where you like along this edge. So I'm just pinning and matching all the raw edges. Then I'm going to come around here. I'm expecting this bit to be tricky because I know the fabric is going to try to move at that point. I'm going to match my seams at the shoulder. And once I've matched the places that are fixed, I then know that the fabric between has to match. And that's obviously why we cut everything so accurately. So I'm pinning around here and then I'm going to match on the opposite side. And what you find with lightweight fabric, and I've purposely chosen my main fabric to be a lightweight fabric so that I can help you if yours is too. What you'll find is it has a tendency to do its own thing and you have to tell it that you're in charge so you've got to negotiate it back into the shape that you cut and you can do that in lots of different ways and it's about just being gentle with it but firm so i'm going to show you when we get around to this part let me just finish the other bits Once we've done this, we're just going to stitch all the way around, but I am going to show you on that little mock-up how to deal with a V-neck if um, you're doing the V-neck design. So don't worry, I haven't forgot you, the V-neckers. It's great to have the two options, I think, and I'm looking forward to having this, v this uh, round neck version. So we're going to come around here and I'm just going to gently stroke this fabric. And what you'll start to see is it starts to behave how it should. So can you see there how it's actually created the right shape? And all we're doing by stroking it in this direction and then that direction is we're just reminding the grain line of the fabric where it needs to be. So don't just decide, oh, I'm terrible, I can't do this. If you are using a lightweight fabric, you really do need to be in charge of it. So really take your time. I've got a few more pins to pop in here and then I need to remember the bit that I always forget and that's to put the ribbon in one of these corners. And I'll show you the best way to do that. It's actually not misbehaving as much as I thought it would. So we're in luck. 
But really do trust yourself on this, guys. Okay, so we're all pinned around the neckline. I'm just going to go to the other side. I might change the camera angle, actually, so that you can see it better. Yeah, because it's important that you see this. I'm going to change the camera angle so you can get up close and you can see then how I just pop the ribbon in uh, for the button. Okay, so hopefully it makes sense that these are the two backs joining and up here is the curve. So I'm just going to concentrate on one of them. I'm going to fold my little bit of elastic in half and it really is, mine's about five centimetres long. We don't want it too big because eventually it's going to come out like this. And if it's too big, then our button will be in the wrong location. But what we need to consider is how we actually put it in. So I'm just going to take that one pin and I'm going to fold that back so we can see. So the, the, the loop needs to be inside the lining like so okay so that's the loop so we're going to end up covering the loop up not yet though take this pin out now this stay stitching gives you a little bit of a guide because you want the ribbon to be at the top when you've turned everything round so you're just going to place it about five centimetres, maybe six, seven millimetres, sorry, below there. And then we can put a pin. I'm going to put a pin in and then I'll explain why we've done that. So just to recap, the loop is facing inside the dress and we are maybe half as much again of this one centimetre down before we get to the edge of that ribbon. That's because we're going to come and stitch along here and then down. And what we don't want to do is to stitch the ribbon. So that's something to look out for when we're actually um, doing this. We can see the ribbon is overhanging here. So we have an idea when we're stitching of where that's going to be. And I'll also pop a pin above, making sure I haven't caught that ribbon. Once we've done that, we can go to the sewing machine and we can stitch all the way around. Now we're gonna be stitching from the notch at the back, which is here, all the way around the curve, all the V-neck, I am gonna show you the V-neck, right the way to the other side and down to where the notch is, okay? I am going to do a little bit of that with you because I want to show you how to deal with the ribbon. Uh, but we are going to be stitching that at one and a half centimetres or five eighths of an inch. Okay, so let's get this set up on the machine and we'll have a little look. Okay, so our machine is set again at a two and a half millimetre uh, stitch length and we're using our one and a half centimetre five eighths of an inch seam allowance. This is the back notch that I'm starting on, so I'm going to do my back stitch. It's important to do quite a sturdy back stitch at this point because it is the point of the garment that is going to take some stress and strain. So we're going to just gently work our way around. Does anybody else find it quite therapeutic to uh, listen to the sewing machine? <laughs> I think that's a strange thing, isn't it? Hey ho. Okay. Now I'm coming up to the ribbon. You can just see it here. So let's show you how to deal with that. So the first thing we need to consider is that we are judging one and a half centimetres from this edge, which is where we want to stop. So let's do that first. So I'm going to stitch over the ribbon put my needle in and then check. Now again, I've done that right. I wish I would do this wrong sometimes, but once you've judged it, you're actually, you'll do it correct all the time. But remember, if you didn't do it right, it's best to stop short. You can go back, turn your flywheel and do one stitch at a time. Now I know that I'm stitched over the ribbon in this direction. 
But what I want to do is to make sure I don't stitch over the ribbon in this direction. So I can just under here feel the bump of the ribbon and I'm just going to make sure, one, that my edge of fabric is still at the one and a half, but two, my ribbon is out of the way. This pin, if you remember, I placed so the ribbon would keep out of the way. So we're just going to nice and steady. Now this bit, we're on a curve. So we're going to treat it like a curve. It's only a gentle curve because this is the back, but you are possibly, if you've done the curved neck edge, going to, cross, going to come across a sharper curve as soon as you get past this shoulder. You can see there how it's suddenly moving. I'm just going to get you past that and then I'm going to leave you to do yours. But what I will do is come back in a moment and I will show you how to deal with the V if you are doing the V-neck. But can you see how I'm ensuring that I stick to that curve? I'm not doing this. Can you see all these lumps and bumps when I straighten it up? They're going to be stitched in and there'll be little puckers all the way along the neckline. So we're going to make sure that we keep the curve as it was cut, as it was pinned, as it was stay stitched. So we've done everything we can to keep this right. And we're gonna come all the way around. Leave you with that. And as I've said in a moment, I'm gonna show you what to do with the V-neck. Okay, so this is the mock-up then of our V-neck that we were working on uh, before so everything else up to this point was the same but this is when we're coming down the v rather than the curved neck edge so we're just stitching everything together at that one and a half oops, sorry <laughs> one and a half centimeter five eighths of an inch seam allowance and what it should do as you come down is you should end up then stitching on this reinforcing stitch and you can then use that as a guide. So you're just stitching over, and when you get to the point, you're gonna turn around. And then you're gonna continue all the way up to the other edge. Now, because this is a mock-up, I haven't been as accurate as maybe I ought to. And I'll show you what I mean by that in one second. Apologies. Let's just do a back stitch there so I can show you. Can you see that my reinforcing stitch was out? That's because I cheated and I just drew it on. But yours, you should come down to the same point and then continue all the way up because this is the bit that we're going to cut. But I'll show you that in the next step. Hopefully that wasn't too traumatic and you find yourself with a very strange looking piece where you've got the front bodice, main fabric and lining attached at the shoulders to your uh, backs. Now the next step, I brought you a little bit closer so you could see what I was doing. And we're gonna snip the curves. So even if you have the V-neck, you've still got a curved section here at the back. So this is still relevant. So I'm gonna go through that and then I'm gonna show you how to cut the V if you did the V option. So first of all, let's have a look at what we've got. So the lining shows it better. So you've got your stay stitching and then you've got the stitching that you've just done. This is the back edge. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna snip the corner. So let me show you that. So I've got rid of all that excess fabric because that excess fabric, when you turn it round, has to fit in that tiny space there and it creates a bulk. So we've got rid of that. Then we're gonna work on the curves. Now I'm gonna do it first and then I'm gonna show you. But we're gonna cut little triangles that are probably two to two and a half centimeters. So an inch and just less. We're gonna cut through the stay stitching and go very close to the stitch line. But we're gonna be incredibly careful that we don't go 
across the stitch line. That's why these are really handy, these are snips. And what they are is they're sharp right to the tip, so you can cut right to the tip rather than using the back of them. So let me show you what I've done. There you go. I've cut, I see how close I've gone to the stitch line? If you don't go that close, there is absolutely no point in doing it. So you may as well stop now and not bother. Once you've done your triangles, you're going to just reduce it by half. And that's just to get rid of the bulk, really. So I'll do that and then I'll hold it up to show you. Okay, so you can see I've just chopped, see how big the seam was before. I've just reduced it by half there. Now I'm going to just continue to do this and then I'm going to come and back, sorry, then I'm going to come back and show you why it's important. Okay, so I want you to do the same all along the front curve if you have one and the back and I'm going to show you why you do it and then I'm going to show you how to deal with the v-neck. Okay, so I have only gone halfway round just so that I can show you um, uh, what I need to show you. So I'm just going to turn the main fabric around so that we see the right side. So you should be able to see your little ribbon sticking out. And I want you to see if you can see where I've actually done these snips and where I haven't done these snips. Because what should happen is where I have done these snips without any pressing, the garment should naturally find the curve. So let's see if that's the case. So can you see that beautiful curve there? And oh, the curve that's already starting to be created without any pressing here. But look what happens when I go to the other side that I haven't clipped. Can you see how it's already fighting itself here and it can't lay flat is the term that they use. So that is why we do it. So look how beautiful it goes on the other side versus this side. At that point, especially, you can see it's kind of fighting itself. So that's why we do it. I will finish that in a second, but I just want to show those who are doing the V-neck how brave they need to be. So we have this V-neck here at the front and we're gonna snip like we did with the triangles along the back curve. We're gonna snip all the way into that reinforcing stitch. So let me show you how brave we are. Can you see how close I've gone? When you've done that, you can also turn your main fabric to the other side of your lining and you should be able to see I may have to press this to show you let's see I will be showing you when I do press it but you can see how probably better this side it creates that beautiful she says <laughs> that beautiful crisp V. You can see it there. That one does need a press, but hopefully you can see why you have to be very brave. If you turn it round and you think, oh, it's really awkward there, flip it back and just see how close you did go to your reinforcing stitches. Because if you don't go close enough, you're actually going to cause yourself a problem and you're not going to be able um, to turn it out properly. So I think the next step, let me check. Okay, the next step is at the ironing board. If you have turned yours around, unturn it so that it's back how we were when we were doing our snips. And at the ironing board, we'll do the first prep for the understitching. Okay, so this is my bodice and I haven't turned it over yet because you can see all of uh, my seams. But what we're going to do, which can be awkward, we're not turning it all the way fully, but what we're going to do is to press, sorry, all of the seam allowance towards the lining. So you, this is my bodice, I've got the wrong side of the bodice facing me. 
And can you see how all that lining is just sort of messing about in the middle there? And all I'm simply going to do is I'm just going to take the strain here so that all of the fabric is pulled up. And I'm just going to go around and press the seam up towards the lining. Now, it's important you do this little pull because otherwise you end up with creases that you're going to stitch in. So you're going to go all the way around. You're going to do this with the V as well. And then you're going to do the same all the way around. Now, you're going to get to a point in the corners where it's almost impossible to do it. That's fine. We're just doing a preparation for the understitching here. And the understitching can't go around corners, so don't worry. Yeah, we're just going to go as close as we can. And then we're going to do the same along these back seams. So nothing is lying flat. Hopefully the video angle is showing you that nothing is lying flat. And it won't lie flat even when you're stitching. So don't worry about that. But you've simply gone around all those seams that you've just stitched and you're pressing your main fabric and the seam, the seam allowance sorry, of your main fabric over towards your lining. Now, if understitching is new to you, then this might seem like a pointless exercise. But what it does, understitching prevents things from turning Back. So the green should stay on the lining side and not roll back over. It also makes the next step, which is pressing everything the right way round, much, much easier because you've done your snips and then you've put your understitching in. So it is tricky. So I am going to go through with you on the machine and I'm going to stick with you all the way around this and then show you the difference at the V-neck. Um, but it is worth it. It is one of the steps that lots of people avoid, but I can promise you it is really, really, truly worth doing. Okay, I'm going to pop back to the machine then. Now we're all pressed and I'll show you the, 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 <laughs> I can't speak today, sorry. I will show you the process. So you probably want to take a deep breath before you do this. Um, feels like a really tricky thing to do, but actually, if you take your time, it really isn't. And the benefits really outweigh um, the messing that you have to do. So let's just explain what you have here. So I'm at the back notch. The line is all pushed to this side and the main fabric that side. But remember, we have just pressed all of the seam allowance towards the lining. So that's where we're at. I have put the needle in and it's just on this side, the lining side of our stitch line, which is here. So I'll probably be coming in about where my nail is there. As I stitch, I'm going to be gently just doing this. And what that does is it ensures that there's no creases here at the seam. So we're just pulling them apart. It's just extra on top of the pressing. So we just, it's like any other day, we do our back stitch and we just gently keep everything moving. So the needle is still on this, just on this side of the original stitch line. You're just going to nice and slowly. Now I'm doing this slow, but actually this is how I would do it. Okay, so I'm not slowing anything down for your benefit. Sorry guys, I know you're important, but so is my understitching. Now you can see I'm coming up to an awkward bit. This is the corner. It may be the one that you put your uh, ribbon in. And we can't go around that corner. So we're just going to go as close to that corner as we can without causing ourselves a problem. So I'm just coming to a point, make sure you can see, where this is causing me a problem. And if I'm not careful, I'm going to start catching all of the other bits of fabric. So I'm just going to go a little bit closer because I can, and then I'm going to do a back stitch. Okay, so I've done the back stitch. So that's the first bit. So I'm going to keep sort of following this line. So I'm going to go beyond that corner going to make sure I've not got anything caught underneath 
and I'm now on the curved bit at the back and I'm going to do exactly the same I'm going to put my needle in just onto the line inside of that stitch line and I'm going to stitch I'm going to do my back stitch first and then we're going to keep going so this is a bit more awkward because obviously we've cut that down a little bit doesn't matter if you don't catch it all just catch as much as you can so I'm moving this out of the way this is never going to lay flat the line inside so don't worry about that all you're interested in is that you keep your seam allowance all the way over it's just there we go just creeped under So this is the shoulder seam that we're just getting past and I'm going to then work my way around. So you see nothing's laying flat so I'm keeping stopping, moving things out of the way, making things look like I need them to look for the stitching. And we're just coming around this curve. So I'm just making sure I've got nothing else caught underneath because I've now got quite a lot of different bits of fabric. See how this is all just a mess, but the bit I'm focusing on is here where I'm actually stitching. I'm staying close to that original stitch line, but making sure I'm on this side of it. If you go too far from that original stitch line, you kind of catch all the lining that's why you go close so I'm feeling like I'm creating myself a problem so I'm just gonna make all that do what it's supposed to do remember when you're sewing you're in charge of the fabric and the sewing machine don't let either of them run away with you so this is the other shoulder So I'm preparing to, for the fact it's going to get a little bit tricky, okay? So it's not going to come as a shock to me because I know it's going to get tricky. So I'm moving everything out of the way and making sure where I'm stitching is nice and flat. Sorry, they're just the bits that um, didn't get taken away when I cut the notches. Nice and steady. See, this is the corner that's just popped up. So I can't go much further until I have to stop again. So I'm just going to do a little bit more, only because I feel like I can. There's no rule as to how close. Just go as close as you feel you can without it causing a big problem. So I've done my back stitch there. So again, I'm just going to follow this corner round until I feel that I can start again so i've made sure that that corner is at the back of my foot out of the way and i think i'm probably going to be okay to start there so my needle in just do a bit bit of adjusting again so it should be easier now because we're just going down the back so back stitch again if you've got the v-neck basically what you're going to do is you're going to have to stop at the front as well for that V. And that's the only difference. So you're going to do exactly what we've done at those two back corners and you're going to do it at the front of the V. So it's no different. You can't stitch around the V. And I'm coming down. I'm still sort of trying to pull it apart. Down to here. And then I'm going to do my backstitch so I'm just gonna press the V and I'll show you how to do it on the V and then we're gonna go back to the ironing board with what we've just done and hopefully you will agree with me the difference that it makes okay so this is to show you exactly that it's the same thing when you've got the V so this is the V that we've snipped 
we've pressed everything towards the lining and imagine we've gone around the back and we're coming down this front edge in exactly the same way we're just pulling everything to one side and on the V you do have a chance of going close because you've done this snip but just go as close as you feel comfortable so you might find you can go all the way around so now if I felt like comfortable I could take my needle to that point and I can spin everything around and I'm back in the right location but you might feel that that's not okay for you and that's fine you can stop before you get to that point do a back stitch and start again so I'm just going to go as far as this so that I can press it over at the ironing board and show you what the difference is. Okay, so once you've done all of your understitching, I'll see you at the ironing board and let's hope you agree that it looks fabulous. Okay, so this is the lining hand bodice that I've been working on. I'm going to push out those corners at the back and turn everything to the right side. And then we're gonna give it a press. Oh, the one thing I need to mention, can you see here, I've got that thread across. That's between my stay stitching. So we do just need to snip that, otherwise it will prevent you pressing. So just gonna snip through those. So I should have one on either side. And I'm also going to snip through, there'll be another row on the inside that you need to snip. Or another thread, sorry, not another row. So once you've done that, you're going to push your corners out beautifully. Give them a roll so that you can get right into it and just dampen your fingers a little. It will help with that. On this side, you can pull the ribbon, makes a big difference. Now, when we've done that, I'm hoping you will see on yours and mine that just by simply lying it flat, it's already creating those curves. I'm not going to be fighting the fabric for it to sit properly. Can you see up here? Check the camera angle in a second. Yeah, so you can see how nicely that's starting to go. So we're simply going to press that nice and steady all the way around that curve. The aim is to do it right on the crease and then you'll see that these start to match. Now my fabric will fight me a little bit just because it's that type of fabric, doesn't press easily. But hopefully you can see how that's creating a beautiful shape. Now I'm going to work on the big curve to the front because mine's a curve, yours may be the V. But the same principle applies. You're just going to get right on the edge and give it a good old press. Steam is your friend at this point if your fabric actually handles a little bit of steam. I'm hoping you can see that this is actually not a painful process because we did the understitching. Okay. I'm hoping the camera angle shows you how beautifully that neck has curved. Yes, you can see that. And then I'm going to do this last bit here. I do have the V neck with me, so I can just do that too. So that understitching has given us a really crisp pressed edge which hopefully you can be proud of.
So, if I can hold it up to the camera, can you see how beautiful that curved edge has pressed? And that's all about the understitching, guys. That's what's doing that. Just going to show you on the V-neck, it's the same process. Just move this for a moment. I'm not moving it very far because I'm going to show you the next step. So this is our V. We're going to do the same thing on our V. And we're just going to follow it down to the point. Get some steam on there if the iron still has some steam in it. I think it does. So it's not a really, it's not a process where you're truly fighting at every point when you've done the understitching. You still do have to put some effort in, but not so much that you're going to get frustrated that it's not sitting properly. Because it's a V, I'm just going to do it from this side too, just because this uh, fabric that I've chosen for the lining is a linen type fabric, so it's just slightly heavier. But what should happen if I hold it up is you can see the lovely V. Can you see the V, how sharp it is? Let's turn it round. And you can see how sharp that V is on the other side. And that's what understitching does for you and all of the snipping. So now we've done that, we're going to move on to actually creating the bodice to a point where you can try it on folks if you so wish. So all we're going to do on the side seams is pin them together and stitch them. So let me just show you. So the lining is showing... Um, the lining is showing. That's the end of the sentence, Donna. <laughs> Sorry. The lining is showing. So what I want you to do is right sides together. Just take your two lining and pin it down the side. So it's lining right sides together. I'm just going to pin this roughly for you so you can see it. I will pin it better before I actually stitch I promise but my fingers aren't working so that's the lining right sides together at the side seam and then you're going to take the bodice and do the same so you've got the bodice side seam here I will hold it up for a better angle in a second and you've got four of these you've got two main fabrics and two linings to match at the side seams and you're going to stitch them with a one and a half centimeter seam allowance and you're going to press these seams open so i'm not going to do that with you once i've shown you the pinning because i think you're more than capable so let me just explain how we've done it so we've taken apart we've got the lining side seam pinned and then we've got the actual fabric and we're going to stitch all four of those so i'm just going to bring the other one round so we've got right sides together we're going to pin that line in we're going to do the same with the main fabric so it doesn't matter now what you, what type of neckline you've got the neckline's done it's either v or curved all the steps from here on in are exactly the same so I'm going to let you pin, stitch and press your four side seams and then I will see you again and we can sort out that back centre seam. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay, so we're nearly there with the bodice. What we have here, the lining is showing and your bodice is, is all together. So you've done your side seams uh, in the last step. I'm going to try and show you now how to finish this back piece so i'm going to take a hold of just the lining okay i'm going to put right sides together like that 
I'm going to keep a hold of that and I'm just then going to go to where the notch is and I'm going to take a hold there. So I have the lining with the right sides together and I'm going to pin. It's a little bit of a tricky detail really to, to, to take a look at this one. So, sorry. It's easier if you can see me pinning. So I'm just going to pin all the way up to the point where the actual garment starts to cause me trouble. And that should coincide with where the notches are. Can you see the notches here? And what it also should do, I'm just going to put one pin in there and then I can show you the bit at the end. What it should also coincide with, if you can see, unfold everything, is where you stopped stitching there. Can you see the black stitch line? So once I've pinned everything, I'm going to make sure that there's no way I can catch this fabric, the main fabric. I'm going to pull that all the way out of the way. And then we're going to stitch down there. So let's get you set up at the machine so you can see. Okay, so this is where all the bulk is at the back. That was the green pin. So I'm starting at that green pin. So I'm putting all the bulk to the back so it's all out of the way. I'm going to line my edge up with a one and a half centimetre and then I'm going to just put my needle down at the point we were looking at where the stitch finished before. I'm going to pull this around, make sure. So all of this at the back is all crazy and it could easily get in your way. So just like you did with the stay stitching, make sure what you're stitching is what you're wanting to stitch. So push everything out of the way. I don't care what happens here. I'm only focusing on here. So we're going to do our couple of forwards, a couple of back stitches. And we're just going to simply stitch all the way down. Do our back stitch at the bottom. And we're going to repeat that with the main fabric. So I've got the main fabric with the right sides together. And I'm going to start pinning it from the bottom. So it's exactly the same process as we've just done on the lining. You can see the lining is over here. And we've got this really awkward bit where it all matches. Now, if you don't get this right the first time, don't stress about it. It's not the end of the world. What you can do is just put some hand stitches in there if you find that you get a gap. But it's definitely not something to stress too much about. But it's all about accuracy. But in order to be accurate, you need to know where you're starting and where you're ending. So you should be able to see here, there's a row of stitching coming in here. So you're going to start exactly where that stops and then continue all the way down to the end. But you're going to be making sure that this green lining is out of the way. So if I show you again, I'm heading for that point where I've put my finger down. All of the fabric I'm not interested in goes all the way to the back, out of the way. And I'm just focusing on putting my needle down exactly where I want it to be. When I've done that, I can do my forwards and back stitch and then continue all the way down. So it's a bit tricky where everything connects. I do accept that. It's not a straightforward part of the project. But it does finish that detail off really nicely at the back. So everything is stitched. You should be able to turn it the right way round. 
you'll notice I haven't pressed it yet, but you should be able to see that that's the detail that we're looking for at the back. So that's the opening above and then it's all together. So we're going to give this a good old press and then we've got a little bit of basting to do. And all that's for is to help us with our next parts of the project. So I'm going to press this and I'll be back. What we have here then is our bodies all pressed out looking beautiful and I have gone to the arms and I've matched the lining and the main fabric all the way around and pinned. I've done the same on the other side and I've also done the same along the bottom. And what that allows us to do, I'm just going to turn you around to the machine, is to baste the lining and the main fabric together so that from now on in it acts as one piece of fabric. Uh, it just makes things easier from now on, especially for the sleeves, etc. So all we're going to do, just for the sleeves, I'm going to take this off. We're going to do our highest stitch, which, sorry, on here is a four and a half. And we're just going to use the edge of our foot as a guide. So I've just put the sleeve over that part of the machine so that I don't catch anything underneath. I'm going to start anywhere, doesn't really matter. I'm going to put the edge of the fabric on the edge of the foot and we're just going to stitch all the way around. So it's just in order to keep this green lining and the main fabric together. You can imagine a sleeve can be difficult enough because we're doing inset sleeves, uh, which we're nearly at, folks, without all of your fabric um, moving in different directions. So this is just to make sure everything acts as the same piece of fabric. So I'm going to leave you to do this on both armholes and the bottom edge and then I'd like you to have your sleeves with you because it's that time. See you in a minute. Let's work on our wonderful sleeves then. So this is uh, one of the sleeves. The right side of the fabric is facing the ceiling so you can see the right side of the fabric. I'm going to take this edge and simply fold it across and I'm going to pin along this edge. Now once you've pinned I want you to stitch using your one and a half centimetre or your five eighths of an inch seam allowance. I then want you to press them open and this is the first seam that I'm going to tell you to finish if you are doing that. So I'm going to overlock mine but I am going to overlock them separately. Uh, I will show you uh, how I do that in the next step. But first of all, if we can all stitch down there and we'll press each of the seams open. I'll let you do that because I think you're more than capable, guys. Remember to set your um, stitch to a 2.5 millimetres because you may still be on the 4.5. Okay, see you soon. So here we have my beautifully overlocked um, seam. I just wanted, it doesn't matter whether you've overlocked yours or what you've done with them really. I just wanted to explain that if you are going to use a seam finish, really you should do each side. So notice I've, that they're not overlocked or finished together. This is more important when you've got a thicker fabric because you can imagine the bulk that that's going to add to your project at the seam, which is quite unsightly. So that's one reason for doing them separately. The other reason to do them separately is if you may in the future or whilst making it, you may want to change the fit. If you've overlocked them together or finished them together, you have to unpick everything in order to undo this seam and let it in or out. So it really does save time if you do it like this. So I just thought I'd show you that before we moved on to uh, the next step. So we're on step 11, I believe, in our instructions. So good going. We're uh, 
almost just a few steps away from having a completed bodice and then we can work on the skirt but for those of you who've got beady eyes you may have noticed i now have red thread in the machine and that's because we're going to put some gather stitches in the bottom of this sleeve so this is the bottom edge of the sleeve the lovely big curve and we're going to do a gather stitch two rows of gather stitches from this seam all the way around to the other side of the seam so i'm just going to move that out of the way we're going to put our stitch length up to the highest which is 4.5 millimeters on my machine and we're going to do our first row of stitches at one centimeter seam allowance so it's just past the edge of your foot again i'm not stitching anything to anything else there's just one layer of fabric and we're just going to stitch all the way around following that beautiful curve i'm going to stay with you for this just because it's easier to then show you the other side Notice how I'm constantly stopping and realigning fabric. You'll notice that a lot as I stitch. And to be honest, you should be noticing it in your own stitching too. If you're not constantly readjusting, your fabric's probably in the lot wrong place. And that's when you start stitching things together that shouldn't be stitched together or just get yourself in a bit of a tiz. So there's nothing wrong with stopping and starting. Not everything is done at breakneck speed. I'm just going to move this seam allowance out of the way and then we're going to stop there. So I haven't stitched over the seam. We're going to give ourselves a long tail because we're going to be pulling those eventually. Then we're going to start where we started the last one and we're going to do another row in exactly the same uh, on exactly the same line as in the bottom hem sorry but at two centimeters so you can either use the two centimeter line on your machine or you can line the edge of your foot up with the stitching that you've already done and then you can bring that all the way around now i'm going to let you complete that remember you have two sleeves to do when you've done both sleeves we'll just gather them together if you put your regular coloured thread back on your machine, we'll also start some work on the sleeve binding. See you in a minute. Okay, so that's both of your sleeves uh, with the gathering stitch. So let's just have a look at how you gather. So I want you to take a hold of the two rows of stitching, just separate them out from everything else. The reason we did two is so that it's a nice even gather. So you want to pull them both at the same time. Okay, so just gently. Now, you don't want to pull them all so all the gather is at one point because that's when it snaps. So can you see I'm pulling a little bit and then I'm just spreading that across the other rows. Now, it will try to twist and turn so you're in charge of that not happening. So you're just going to gently keep doing that. Once you've done the, let's say the first half, then move on to the other side and take a hold of the two rows from the other side. It's probably gathering something, you know, to that extent, that's what we're looking for. Uh, so it's quite a lot of gather into the cuff of these sleeves. So when I've done that side, I'm going to take a hold of the two on this side and do exactly the same. When you've gathered both of them, just set them to one side. We just have a little bit of work to do on your sleeve binding. So if you want to take a hold of them for the next step, And then we can get going. Here we are with our um, sleeve binding. I'm going to pin the short edges together with the right sides facing. So the bit that's facing the camera now is the wrong sides of the uh, sleeve binding. 
and I'm just going to pin across that short edge and then we're going to stitch it with a one and a half centimeter or a five eighths of an inch seam allowance. When you've done that to both, there's a little bit of pressing required. So you guessed it, I shall see you at the ironing board and we'll get that done together. Right, so we're on step 12 now. So we've just stitched the short edges together. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna press open that seam. I know it's only a little one, but we're gonna press it open. Like so. Then, we're going to fold it in half lengthways. So we're going to take that seam that we've pressed open and fold it towards itself. So that the whole band is then folded in half. So what you can see here is the right sides of the fabric. So it's the wrong sides are being pressed together. Now this fabric isn't the best at being pressed so I'm going to do my utmost to press a crease in there okay I think we've managed it it's gone on a bit of a wobble sure I will keep tripping up over the ironing board. Let me show you how we've done that. So that's the folded edge. You can see the right side and we folded it like that, wrong sides together. Once you have two bands looking like this, two sleeve bindings, then I will meet you. You need a bit of space uh, near your sewing machine and you need your two sleeves and your two bands. And let's get this cuff sorted. So this can be a fiddly bit, so take your time. And you may be tired at this point. You've done a lot of concentrating if you haven't had a break in between. Remember to give yourself that break. You don't have to do it in one. You can pause, you can have days between. There's no right or wrong way to sew. This is uh, supposed to be a pleasure, not a chore. But what I have in front of me, if you are ready, this is this one of my sleeves and it's the right way around so you can see the right side of the fabric there and this is one of my sleeve bands that we've just pressed this is the seam you can see there that's the seam and i'm going to take the band i'm going to unfold it and i'm going to slide it over the top so the wrong sides of the band is here look and the right sides of the band is facing the right side of the sleeve. When I'm happy I've got that, I'm just going to pin so that those seams match. Pop a pin. I'm then going to go to the other side. Now you should have a little notch. Can you see my notch on the gathered section of the sleeve? And a little notch, there you go, on the band, on the binding, sorry. So I want you to match those two points. And again, a bit like we've said before, you match the places that you know are correct and have to remain in those locations. And then we know the problem, if you want to call it a problem, that you have to deal with between the two. So I'm just concentrating on this top section here. First of all, I'm just checking that I've gathered enough or indeed I may have gathered too much. So what should happen is all of that gather in, in, on the inside, but actually this band binding on the back is all nice and flat. So I actually think I've got enough gather, but it's not quite even. Can you see a gap here where there isn't any? So I'm just gently going to even out this gather just between those two pins. I'm not worried about the other side yet. I'm going to do that as a separate exercise. And once I'm happy, I'm going to put some pins in there. I was just checking then. 
the reason I paused, I was just checking the instructions which way around it says to um, stitch because that kind of dictates where I put the pins. But actually, I might have done it the opposite way around, but it's good to know that you can use anyway. So I'm matching all the raw edges at the top here. I've made sure my gathers are nice and even. And then I'm just popping in the pins. So it can be fiddly because it's quite a small space that we're working into and there's quite a lot of gather. I think I've got one more pin and I can show you this half and then I'll leave you to pin the rest. So let me show you how this looks. So on the inside, it's all evenly gathered. On the outside, I can see the wrong side of my band, but look, there's no puckers. So I can stitch quite happily. I'm gonna work on the other half now I'd like you to work on yours and when you've got both of your sleeve bindings pinned in place then we can have a look at the best way to stitch them. So I'll see you when you've done that. So let me explain what you're looking at here and also make a confession that this is different to the pictures in your instructions but actually I think it's good to see you can do it either way. So what I have here is the flat binding is on the outside and I'm actually stitching on the inside onto the gathered section. So what you need to be doing is working just on kind of like two inches or so at the most. And we're going to be stitching right between those two red lines because one of them was at one centimetre one was at two, so the middle is one and a half, which is the seam allowance uh, that we're looking for. Now you need to do, regardless of which way around you stitch this, whether it's like in the instructions or it's like how I have it here, you're going to be doing two things. You're going to be making sure that your binding stays flat and you're going to be making sure that your gathers don't get stitched like this. So you'll see that as I start, I'm gonna constantly be checking underneath and readjusting. Okay, so all points, I'm just gonna keep readjusting. This will want to curl up, so we're gonna pull it back down. So we're only working at a few inches at a time. Notice I keep sort of smoothing these gathers this direction. Again, that's to make sure I don't get anything caught. And then I'm going to pull this around so I've got a little bit more to work with. Take the pin. Always checking nothing underneath is caught and that my gathers are going in nice and evenly. All this faffing isn't just for you, I promise. This is uh, the faffing that's necessary to get a good finish. Something going on there, okay. So see how this is trying to curl again? So I'm making it do what, it, what I want it to do, not what it wants to do. I'm worried that these are going to get caught under if I didn't just have a little look at them. Again, I'm going to pull myself around. Make sure I'm happy before I stitch. This is another job that I do relatively um, slow and I do keep stopping. And again, that's not for your benefit. That is what I have to do to make sure this works properly. Okay, I'm almost back to where I started. And I can do my back stitch. And then I'll meet you. We're going to do some close-up work. You need a hand sewing needle and you need um, some scissors. Okay.
fabric scissors that is and we'll see you shortly so here we are this is the wrong side of the binding that you can see you just want to do a quick check that you haven't left any puckers or anything once you're happy you're going to trim that seam allowance by half okay so i find it easy to do it from this side rather than that side so i'm just going to go in first i'm just going to cut all the way around my fingers are making sure I'm not catching anything towards the back and I'm just going to cut it by half all the way around. Once we've done that, we're going to pin the binding in place and then we're going to do a little bit of hand stitching. So I do hope you forgive me with the hand stitching. Try to keep it to a minimum. Now, some of the testers have gone ahead and done this on the sewing machine. And if you want to do that, that that's up to you. I do think it's one of the locations where it does actually look better if it's hand stitched. So I'm going to show you the way I intended. And then the beauty of doing your own sewing is you can do whatever you please. <laughs> After all, I'm not sat there watching you. You can do it your way. So I'm just about coming to the end there. So that's cut by half all the way around. Not perfectly neat. It's very difficult because I've got a camera in front of me. But actually for this purpose, it doesn't truly matter. What you're going to do then is you're going to press so that the seam allowance is coming on to the binding. So I'm going to go do that and come back. That just helps to give a crispness here. So hopefully you can see the difference. Now, this is our next step. So let me find the seam. There we are. So I'm looking at the inside here. I'm going to fold this raw edge over so that it almost meets where I cut. Does that make sense? So we go from up here. Sorry, they're getting in the way. Then fold. Then we're going to fold it over one more time. And we're going to put a pin. So what you should find is that that second fold coincides with your stitch line here that you stitch. So let me just do it a bit further on so you can see it better maybe. So take the raw edge of the binding, fold it in half so that it matches the top of that gather and then fold it over again. So you're in closing that gather and we're going to put a pin. I want you to work your way all the way around and don't be shy with your pins. I'm actually putting one in between those two now because they're going to hold it in place because once we've done that, we're going to do a little bit of hand sewing. So I'm going to let you work your way around. And when I see you again, I need to look how terrible that cutting is. When I see you again, you need to have a needle threaded and all of this binding pinned in place. See you in a minute. So I'm all pinned all the way around and I just thought I'd show you how I did the sewing. Um, as I said, it's not my favorite thing, so it's not the neatest, but it just has to be functional because nobody's gonna see it. So the first thing I do is I just bring, no, thread all the way through. I'm using the seam there and I've gone through the binding and I pull it through and I'm going to do leave a little bit of a tail which is what I didn't there didn't do the last time and I'm just going to do three stitches little stitches in the same location and that should be enough to anchor it in place going forward we pulled it all the way through again <laughs> see so it's not just you promise once you've done this bit the rest is easy pieces 
And like I say, you're not going to see this, so don't kind of get all stressed out about the size of it because you're just not going to see it. So once you've anchored it, you're going to move on a touch, go through the seam and the binding. Then you're going to go under here and I'm hoping you can see, can you see that I'm going to pick up that stitch and then through the binding. Now that is a really good trick for lots of things and what that means is it ensures that i don't go through to the front so you won't be able to see my stitching so i'm going to do that all the way around maybe about every half a centimeter until i get to the back where i started and at that point i can do three stitches small stitches in the same place again just to finish it off and then I can remove all of the gather stitches that we can see and that is your cuff all finished so you might want to get yourself a brew to do this and chill out but once you've done it we're going to be insetting these sleeves now don't be worried about that I'm going to be here with you every step of the way and I promise it's not always as difficult as what you think okay see you in a bit okay so let's do these sleeves now i do do sleeves slightly different to the traditional method uh, so i don't put a gather stitch in the top in order to ease it uh, i use a completely different method which i'm going to show you here that's not to say that either method is wrong uh, it's just about what you find the easiest and i find this the easiest therefore this is the one that i'm always inclined um to use so <clears throat> if you've got your bodice and one of your sleeves and lots of pins we can get going so first of all we're going to put the bodice inside out and that's how we're going to start so you should be able to see um, your lining and then we're going to have the sleeve the right way around now there'll be bits of this that you will maybe catch properly as I'm doing it but I'm going to show you a, a close-up after the fact so let me just get the angle correct for this so that hopefully you can see that is one of the armholes I'm going to take the sleeve and I'm going to put it inside the armhole like that my first job then is to match the underarm seam Again, we're back to matching everything. So I'm gonna match that and put a pin. I'm then gonna follow the sleeve and the armhole around until I get to the notches. So this is the back, so it has two notches. Oh, <laughs> and this also has two notches. I was hoping it was the wrong sleeve so that I could show you. Um, this seems to happen every time I film that I always choose the right sleeve anyway. If that didn't match, so if that was a single and a double notch, you've got the wrong sleeve. So you just simply need to uh, pick up the other sleeve and start again. But as we've got it right, we're going to roll with it. Once you've matched those notches, you're going to go back to the underarm seam. And you're going to follow both your sleeve and bodice around until you find your single notches. And then we're going to put a pin and match them. This is all feeling quite quite easy, <laughs> hopefully. Save the worst till last, shall I? I want you to notice that I'm putting the pins approximately a seam allowance down. Notice how I'm doing that all the way around. And that's purposeful. So that will that will come into play later. Now there is one more notch, and that's the notch at the top of the sleeve. And that matches the shoulder seam. So if you could pin that one. Now this one, I always find easiest or easier if I pin it like that. And it, it'll, it'll uh, become a bit clearer later. So I'm just going to go back to the underarm and I'm just going to swap the pin to be the inside of the sleeve. And I'm just placing it approximately a seam allowance down. 
And then I'm going to check any of the other pins, make sure that they're all on the inside of the sleeve. Just makes life easier when we're doing the sewing, that's all. Okay, so this is your underarm sleeve and this is your double notches up here that aren't matched properly, Donna. Match them properly, there we go. First job is to do pinning between those two locations. Notice, if I do that, it all gets a bit baggy and I think it's not going to fit. But if I create the curve that it actually is, like so, we've got a chance of pinning. So first job is to pin all the bits that are easy. So let's pin between these notches. And again, I'm pinning at that seam allowance. Some people find it easy to draw the seam allowance on, and that is absolutely fine. I'm not sure on this fabric you'd be able to see it, but hopefully you'll understand uh, what I mean by drawing the one and a half centimetre line here. So this is the underarm seam to the single notch. And again, hopefully you can see that's nice and flat so we can put some pins in there. So we're always matching the raw edges. And we're always putting the pins approximately on that seam allowance or stitch line, which is a seam allowance down. So that is the easy bits done. So now we need to figure out what we're going to do up at the top where you can see that's too big. Now, because of the style of these sleeves, there's not a huge amount of ease because the ease is taken out by the fact that it's a wide sleeve. So it's a nice um, beginner sleeve to get the kind of process as to how to do an inset sleeve. So hopefully this will set you off on your journey. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the curve. And whilst I'm creating the curve, this excess, I'm just sort of evening it between. So I'm going to put some pins in first and then I can show you because it's, it's um, really difficult with camera angles when I'm doing sleeves. So I'm going to put a pin on that stitch line. I'm going to go to this bump and I'm going to put a pin on the stitch line and I'm going to do that here too so my thumb this thumb kind of pushes down or up dependent on where I need the fabric to go but our aim is that where we're pinning is nice and flat but the excess you can see the excess there can't you but look at where we're actually pinning it's nice and flat ready to stitch so all we've done is taken a flat piece of fabric and done that to it but ensured that where we're stitching is nice and flat so hopefully you can see that this sleeve doesn't have a huge amount of ease so it's not going to take you forever to ease all of that in but the key is to create the curve so you know what you're dealing with I don't think there's very much on this side at all. So, but let's have a look. Creating the curve, even in any of that excess with my thumbs, either pushing up or down with my thumbs. Then I'm going to pop a pin on the stitch line. So again, you can draw your stitch lines on. That's absolutely fine. If that helps you. I don't know what I've done there. There we go. It just wouldn't have shown up on this fabric anyway. Um, and I don't think that these sleeves are particularly difficult because there isn't a huge amount. The reason I put this this way is so that the ease can go all the way to that point. If I'd have put the pin in this direction, it kind of stops. We lose that section of ease, if that makes sense. So now I can take that out and I'll just change it to the right direction. So I probably made that look easy. Um, the problem with sleeves is that once you know how to do them, unfortunately, you do make them look easy. Um, they're not all easy. This is a particularly easy sleeve. So as I said, a great one to start. But don't worry if you have to unpin it, take it out. 
what I don't want you to do is to move on to the next step, which is stitching, until you are absolutely happy with your pinning. There is no point going to the machine knowing that your pins are not on flat locations and that you've got lumps and bumps all along that stitch line. Because if you have, the next step at the machine is going to be incredibly painful and then you're going to end up unpicking. So really persevere with this. When you've got both of them pinned in ready, sorry, start again. When you've got one of them pinned in ready, meet me at the machine and I'll show you the technique of stitching. Okay, I've tried to find an angle where my hands are too much in the way. But first of all, let me explain what you are looking at. So this is the sleeve that we pinned and this is the underarm seam that you can see. Notice that the sleeve comes up in this direction. It's not slotted over the machine underneath. Well, that if you do it that way, all of the problems that you're going to encounter will be hidden because all of the problems that you encounter is inside here where all of the lumps and bumps may occur. And if you do it the other way, you're stitching it blind. So it really is incredibly difficult. So I'm going to show you in this direction. I'm only going to be working on like two inches at a time. So I'm going to start and do my back stitch as normal. And then we're going to go. So like I've said a few times already in this tutorial, we're going to let the fabric be the curve. There is absolutely no point in doing that because could you see all the bumps that are going to happen? So you're going to keep it on the curve. Now, when you get further up here, it might be that the curve comes in this direction. So you are recreating what we did in order to pin it correctly. And that's absolutely fine. So you can see I'm starting to kind of get into trouble with this. It's Everything's in its way. So this is where you have to use your fingers. So not only are we keeping the seam allowance at one and a half, we are making sure with our fingers that nothing is caught underneath and that any of this excess is pushed into the seam allowance. So I'm kind of pulling gently and just manipulating the fabric and I'm taking my pins out at the very last moment. I'm not trying to be too clever and as soon as I find that this is in the way I stop and I pull it round. So nice and steady. This is another um, technique that, that I do very slowly and I don't apologise for that. It needs to be done slowly. There's no whizzing sleeves in, I'm afraid. Now I'm just conscious that there may be something here. So I'm just checking underneath with my hands and my fingers before I set off again. Now this is my double notch. So if anywhere's gonna get tricky, it's gonna be here and you can kind of see where the problems may be. At this point is when we might start to curve it upwards like that. Because if we had to curve it like that in order to pin it, it makes sense, hopefully, that we also need to do it like that in order to stitch it. But we're still going to keep stopping. We're keeping checking. If we find that we may have a problem, so we're kind of pushing a bump towards the other end, I want you to stop. I don't want you to continue. I want you to deal with these bumps as they occur. Because if you chase them, you'll end up chasing them to your underarm at the other side. Um, and that's just as bad. So you'll still end up unpicking. So watch, we have that bump. Put my finger here and I'm bringing it up. So I'm creating that curve that we did in order to pin it. And suddenly we're past the bump. We may be straight into another bump, which I think we are, but we're going to use the same technique and we're going to go nice and steady. So that notch here, there, sorry, is the um, shoulder seam. So we are halfway there. 
just checking there's nothing underneath I'm going to take my pin out and i'm just gently manipulating the fabric as i go taking my pins out at the last moment sometimes you might get to a point where you think i can't overcome a bump and what you can do is put your needle in lift your foot up and push some of the fabric towards the back on the seam allowance that can help if you do find that you're getting into difficulties so don't let the machine dictate to you sometimes you have to just stop and tell it what you want to do see how this is going to be a tricky bit to get around so i'm going to take that pin out first i'm going to put my fingers here and see how I'm just gently manipulating all of that fabric. I'm going to push this bump back. So if I lift up and push that bump, hopefully you can see, sorry, with my fingers, push that bump out of the way, gives me a chance to continue. So this bit's a bit tricky. But can you see how I'm not giving up? I'm just manipulating the fabric, making it do what I need it to do. Now, with theory, we should be home sailing now because we are past the first single notch and we should just be able to stitch it nice and flat until we get back to the underarm. So as always in life, there's always a good and a bad sleeve, uh, a good and a bad side, sorry. And generally with sleeves, there's always a sleeve that goes in really nicely and one that you kind of have to fight a little bit for. So just be prepared. And what's the worst that can happen? We just have to unpick it and do it again. But sleeves are tricky, so expect it to be tricky. And therefore you shouldn't be disappointed if you struggle with your first one. Now you're going to finish this seam and go back to the ironing board and we're just going to press. I'm going to show you how to do the pressing and also how to check that your sleeve is in correctly. So this is our first sleeve attached. I just wanted to say that you just want to check all the way around that seam that you didn't catch any lumps and bumps before you finish that seam because uh, that's the point when you would need to redo. If you just have a little one somewhere and it's not too big, first of all, just press it to see if it'll disappear. If it doesn't disappear, you may get away with just unpicking so much. So if the click was here, the glitch was here, sorry, just pick a sort of an inch and a half either side and you might be able to ease that back in. So you may not have to unpick the whole thing. Um, what you'll find is that the seams naturally kind of fall towards the sleeve. So I think it's best just to press them towards the seam. So you can do that from the right side. And can you see I'm just gently, sorry, put that that way, just gently pressing everything in that direction. It's a difficult um, seam to press in all honesty. Especially because of the thickness of the sleeve, the width of the sleeve, sorry. But hopefully you'll be able to tell that that does actually make a nice difference to how that hangs. So you've got one more sleeve to do and then I'm going to show you to, to how to put a button on using the machine. And that will be our bodice completely done. So if you meet me with your button and your bodice, once you've put the other sleeve in, we'll get that finished and then we can get going on the skirt. First of all, let's look at the location. And that is all dictated really by the ribbon that you put in. So I've just pinned so that these two edges match at the top and the uh, ribbon is is out now you do need a lightweight button for this so only a teeny tiny one 
So there's my uh, bottom. And I'm gonna place it right at the end of that ribbon. So you can just see where the hole is because that wants to be the center of that button. Otherwise things are gonna sag. So I'm gonna use this pin to mark it. There. Push it all the way in. So I know that that location is where I want to put my button. Just going to move that to one side while I explain what this is. So this is how we can put a button on using our machine. And essentially, we're just going to zigzag between those holes. So the first job is to set your machine to a zigzag stitch and to put on your button hole, sorry, your button foot, which is this one. The second thing to think about is if we're going to zigzag through these, what we don't want to happen is the feed dogs to take that button through because at some point the needle will then hit the button. So there are three ways of doing that. One is the easiest way if you have the option on your machine, which I do, and that is to lower the feed dogs. Did you see them lower here? Put them back up. So if I put them back up, I've got to do that so you can see let's lower them again see them disappear that's the best way to do it but if you don't have that option your machine sometimes has a plastic plate that goes across here that covers them so that's the next option the last option which isn't the best but it, it would work is that you change your stitch length to be almost zero or as close to zero as you can and then it stops it traveling so once you've stopped it traveling, so we've covered the health and safety, we're going to pop our button in that precise location that we marked with the pin. And we're going to slide it under the foot. Bear with me. I'm all fingers and thumbs today. Let me do that in that direction. It's going to help me. This button is so tiny that maybe um, maybe I should have stitched it on by hand. <laughs> I'm not going to give in. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to capture it so that the two holes that I want to stitch are between the blue. So I can get rid of that pin now. So the first job is to, what we want to do is to by hand turn our flywheel. Now I can already see that's hitting the button. So I'm going to move or reduce the width of our stitch. So, okay, there we go. Now let's check the other side. Need to be slightly wider. So not until I'm happy that it's going in both of those holes do I put my foot down. So I'm happy now. I'm going to put my foot down. Now I actually have four holes in this button. So I'm just going to turn us around 90 degrees. But again, I'm going to check actually, do they go in? And they do. So then I can put my foot down. When I take it off, I'm going to leave a long tail because I'm going to use them in a second. I'll explain why. So there's my button. A bit messy on the back simply because I got something caught, I think, when I was messing. But we can just use a hand needle and tie them in. But that's our button on the front, really secure. And it should fasten nicely onto the ribbon. There we go. You wanna take these tails that are coming out the front, put them onto a um, hand sewing needle and thread them through to the back. Once they're threaded through to the back, you can tie everything together and snip off the excess. But that is the most secure way to pop your button on. 
So guys, you have finished your bodice. So you are more than halfway now. And from now on in, all of the techniques should be relatively familiar to you. So it shouldn't take us very long. I'm looking forward to it. Next thing we're going to do then is work on our skirt. So I would like you to have your upper front and back skirts and we'll get going. Okay, so hopefully you can tell what this is from the pieces that you have left. So I have under here, this is the back upper skirt and it's facing the ceiling. So this is the right size of the fabric is facing the ceiling. Laid on top, with the side seams matching is the upper front skirt and the right side of the fabric is here and I'm simply laying it down there. So you have this real lovely shape here and then it comes down this side. So all I want you to do is to pin down each side, stitch with your one and a half centimetre seam allowance or five eighths of an inch then I want you to press them open and then if you are finishing your seams, then is the moment to do so. So you're basically just creating the skirt like that. When you've done that, I'll see you at the ironing board and I'd like you to have your casing with you. So your waist casing. Can't speak today. Waist casing. So this is the waist casing casing and this is the wrong side facing the ceiling we're going to fold over each of the short edges so wrong sides together and we're going to fold over one and a half centimeters or five eighths of an inch and we're going to measure it because it's important when we've measured it we're going to give it a good old press And then we're going to tuck the raw edge under to that crease. So we're basically just making a really skinny hem. I'm just going to press and then I'll hold it up and show you what we've done. Actually, I'm going to get some pins so that they'll be in the right place. So I'm going to pin and I'm going to pin it in the location that you're going to stitch. Okay, so notice you're going to be stitching quite close to this edge. You're going to be using a 3.5 millimeter seam, uh, stitch length, sorry, because you're going to see it. So you're going to stitch down there and you're going to do the same on the other side. I'm going to do one now for you so that I can show you. But once you've done both of those, I want to um, I want you to have this, sorry, and the skirt that you've just stitched together, and we'll be attaching this. So before we start, I just wanted to show you how close we stitched towards that edge on the casing. Now, what we have here is the top of the front upper skirt. Okay, so the pieces that you stitched the side seams, this is the front and this is the notch mark in the centre. We're going to take the casing that you've just hemmed the small edges. So this is the right side of the skirt and this is the right side of that casing. And I'm simply going to lay them on top, just like that. I'm going to put one pin in and then I can explain what I'm doing. So, I have the right side of the skirt facing the ceiling and I've actually laid this down with the wrong side facing the skirt. This is the centre notch of the front upper skirt. So, I've matched this edge with that notch. I'm going to pin matching these top row edges all the way around the skirt all the way and then I'm going to stitch it. So what should happen if I pass this under the ironing board is that when you get come all the way round you'll come with your other hemmed edge and you will be laying it exactly butted up against there. 
and then you're going to stitch all the way around with a one and a half centimetre seam allowance. So you've got a fair bit of pinning to do there, guys. So when you've done that, meet me back here and we'll go on to the next step. So we're now going to create the actual channel that our tie is going to go through. So we're going to tuck this raw edge under like so and then we're going to pin. Okay, that's how we're going to do it. And then we're going to stitch along this edge. But we're going to do it accurately and we're going to be measuring three and a half centimetres from the top to that curve that I was just showing you. So let's do some checking. Three and a half centimetres is there. Going to pin through all of the layers and then I'm going to go a bit further on and do the same process. Now it's, it will get easier but right at the beginning you need to keep checking that you are at three and a half centimetres. Now I'm just going to put another pin in and give it a press because then I can hold it up to the camera a bit better and you can see exactly what we're uh, looking at. So you can see that this edge here hasn't been tucked under. That's exactly how we left it. And the edge next to it has been tucked under so that from the top here to that fold is three and a half centimetres. Then we've popped some pins in and pressed it and then we're going to stitch close to this edge all the way around using a 3.5 millimetre stitch length. Okay, now take your time with this. There's no point rushing because you are going to see this on your finished article. So I'm going to take some time and I shall see you when that's all finished. So this is what the top of your upper skirt should look like. So you should have a hole here ready to put your tie through. So that's your channel all completed. We can pop the upper skirt to one side now and let's work on the lower skirt. So dependent upon the size that you chose to make, you may have one, uh, sorry, you may have two or three panels here. But what we need to do is to create create a big circle of fabric, big loop of fabric. So we're going to take the short edge and pin, and then we're going to go and pin the next short edge to another short edge. Now I only have two here, but you um, and it's still causing me a problem, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know, let's do it that way. So, there's a lot of gather on this skirt. Who designed this? <laughs> so, this is our short edge. So we're gonna keep going. We're gonna find another short edge here where I've pinned right sides together. And what we will do is we will stitch with a one and a half centimeter seam allowance, press them open and finish them if you're doing so. Then you're going to go along till you find the next short edge here. Now you may have a third skirt, so you would place your third skirt on there, like so. Pin, stitch and press. And then you would continue until you got your last two short edges and you can pin and stitch and press those together. So let me just pin this one and then I can show you what we're trying to achieve. Just one big loop of fabric. Be very careful that your fabrics are the right direction. You don't want one panel facing one way and the next panel facing the opposite because it will be noticeable on your skirt. When we've done this, we're going to go back to some good old gathering, just like we did on the sleeves. 
and we're going to gather each panel separately. So if you have two panels, you're going to do two. And if you have three panels, you're going to do three. OK, so we then have just a big old loop of fabric. Let me pop it out on the table. Can you see there? It's just one big loop of fabric. And what you may have is an even bigger loop of fabric if you had three bottom panels. Now I'm going to stitch mine. So we're going to stitch with our two and a half millimetre stitch length. We're going to use our regular one and a half or five eighths of an inch seam allowance. We're going to press them open. And if we are finishing our seams, we're going to finish our seams. When you've done that with all of your panels, I'll see you at the machine and we'll just have a little recap of gathering, but we will need to change the colour thread on our machine to something contrasting. So I'll find my red thread again. See you in a more. Okay, so we're back at gathering. This is our big loop of bottom skirts. It may be two panels long or three panels long, but we're gonna gather each panel in turn. So, I've made sure I'm at the top edge, so the pattern direction is correct. I've lined up the fabric with one centimetre. I've got red thread and I'm not going to do a back stitch. And I'm just going to go all the way along one panel at one centimetre. What I should have, see it happens to us all, I should have my stitch length at four and a half. So I've adjusted that now. <laughs> That's going to be awful together, but hey ho. So one centimetre all the way to the other side of the panel. So when I say a panel, I mean seam to seam. The reason we do two rows of gather stitching you will have seen patterns uh, where it where there were, was only one row of gathering but what can happen is when you gather it the pleats kind of go on an angle and then you stitch them in on an angle so it looks really weird so this is a bit of a fail safe way still have to check when you're stitching but a better way to make sure there's no problems so I'm just coming up to the seam and then I'm going to stop and I'm going to leave a long tail and I'm going to repeat down that same edge but I'm going to do two centimetres and the easiest way to do that is actually use the edge of your foot along that red row. I'm going to leave you to do <laughs> do you know what's going on this afternoon? Let's have a look. I'm going to leave you to do that second row and then complete the exercise on all of your remaining panels. Then I'm going to show you how we do the hem on this bottom skirt before we go any further. So I'm going to do the same. I'm going to fix my machine first <laughs> and uh, I'll see you shortly. Don't panic, the machine was fine. It had just come off the take-up lever, so it was just protesting, and I don't blame it. So, I still have red thread, and I'm still at 4.5 millimetre stitch length, because we're going to do another basting stitch on step 23, and this is to the bottom edge. But before I show you the bottom edge, I just want to show you the two rows of Gavis stitches across each of those panels at the top so once you've done that we're going to swap edges and we're going to go down to the bottom and we're going to do the same thing but we're going to use a two centimeter seam when I say the same thing what I actually mean is we're going to do one row of basting stitches and this is to help with the hem so again, we're not going to do any back stitches. We're just going to go straight for it. We have the edge of our fabric at two centimetres. And we're just going to stitch all the way around. So across all of the seams this time, just one long row of stitching. When we finished that, 
I'll meet you at the ironing board. So you need lots of pins and this lower skirt. So what you can see here is the basting stitch that we've just done along the bottom edge. So it's not the top edge where we have two, it's just where we've done that two centimetre line here. And we're going to use that basting stitch as a guide to create our hem. So we're going to take the fabric, by the way, this is the wrong side of the fabric that you can see. So I'm turning it over. So now this bit is the right side of the fabric. We're going to take it so that that red thread is right on the crease line. You see that? And then we're simply going to press. Now, I find that much easier than going all the way along measuring two centimetres. And I hope um, that you feel the same. Oh, slipped a little bit. Let's redo that. We're going to take the raw edge and tuck it. So can you see? We're going to take the raw edge and we're going to tuck it under and fold it back. I've put some pins in and then I can hold it up for you. Now you'll be glad to know I'm not going to make you watch me do this all the way around, but you may be a little sad to see how much of this you actually have to do because you've got to go all the way along those skirt panels so you may have two or three skirt panels to do so that's the red thread right on the edge where we press we pressed up we've tucked the raw edge in and then we've put our pins close to the folded edge here and that's approximately where we're going to pin uh, sorry where we're going to stitch but i will join you back at the sewing machine to show you how to do that but first of all just persevere and do all of that pressing and pinning okay so i actually don't think you need me for this but miss you <laughs> and i didn't want to leave you on your own for too long so just to recap we've now got our black thread in this is our hem that we've just spent forever pinning and pressing and we have a stitch length of 3.5 we're going to do our back stitch as normal and then we're going to stitch close to this side of this sorry folded edge and we're just going to go all the way around nice and steady so it's nice and neat when we've done this, we can take out the red um, basin stitch that's sort of here on the hem. But I just thought I would take a chance to check in with you to make sure you're okay, make sure everything's going smoothly. Check if you need a break. Remember, this is not a marathon. This is a marathon, sorry, not a sprint. Nobody cares how long it takes to make your dress. What they care about is how beautiful it is. And I'm sure it is looking beautiful. And I actually can't wait to see it. So please share it. You know what the hashtags are. Um, or you can send it to me privately if you don't want to share it with the world. I'm quite happy with that. In fact, I'd rather see it privately than not see it at all. So please um, message me on any of the social media platforms with a picture. That would be fantastic. And this is going to take some time to get through. And then our next step is attaching this flounce or frill to the bottom of our upper skirt. I'm going to leave you to this and then we're going to go through in detail how to deal with that gather because there's quite a bit of gather there and then we'll go in. Now I believe we are currently doing yep step 23 and there are only 26 steps. So you are nearly there guys and i actually can't wait to flounce in this dress because i think these colors are going to look really great okay happy hemming and i'll see you shortly so before we go on to step 24 act 
actually doing the sewing i just want to explain the method of uh, putting the quarter point notches on your lower skirt if you have three sections now if you have two sections the notches and uh, details are all there but if you have three it's very difficult to do thirds without confusing all of the notches so it's written down in um, words how to quarter something within that step 24 but i thought it'd be good just to show you what we mean so imagine this is your skirt loop okay and it's made up of three sections so what i would like you to do is to lay it flat at one point so it doesn't really matter. Let's just take one of the seams for an example. We're going to lay it flat. Hopefully you can see that all. So once it's truly flat, you can take a pin and you can put a pin or a notch, however you feel most comfortable, at this fold. Yeah. And then you've already got a seam or you put a pin at this far end. Then when you've done that, you're going to open your loop up. Obviously, your loop is going to be much bigger than this, but I don't have the right camera angle to do it bigger. So once you've got two notches, you're going to open it up in the other direction. So hopefully, if I hold it up, you can see there's the pin that we put in and you're going to match it with the seam or the pin on the other side. And then we can mark this point either with a pin or with a notch, whichever is your um, preferred method. So then you actually have those four points marked. You have the seam here, a pin opposite, and then you have the two points here and they're the four points that we're going to match to the skirt then so you've got one two three four and on the skirt upper skirt that we're going to attach it to you have the two side seams and then you have the center front and the center back and each of those pins get marked with matched sorry with one of those locations so hopefully that makes it clearer if my words in the instructions don't make it clear enough right so now we've all got those four notches marked we need to go on to the pile of fabric here that believe it or not is your upper and lower skirts so i need a better camera angle to show you what you're looking at and then we can get going let me change it round okay so what you have here is your lower skirt. It's inside out and this is the center. Then what I have in my other hand, sorry, <laughs> couldn't find it then, is your upper skirt with the uh, waist casing that you put in. And that's the right way around. We're going to take it, we're going to bunch up the waist here, in my hand is the waist, and I'm going to put that all the way into the skirt, leaving all of that bottom edge here in my hand. It's this bottom edge that we're going to match to the gathered edge of the lower skirt. So. We've got four points, haven't we, that we're going to match. So I want you to match the four points. So it could be the two side seams matching together, or it could just be notches, dependent on how many you have. It's easier to start with one here and then work your way round to the next one. And that way you don't get completely confused about what you're looking at. So I'm working my way down the curve to find the center notch and that's here. Then I'm gonna work my way along the gather until I find the notch, next notch 
or pin that I've placed on the gather. Once I find it, I'm going to pin them together. So that's two of the four done. I'm going to follow the same thing. I'm going to keep going around the inner skirt here, which is the upper part, till I get to the side seam. Or the, then I'm going to go along the gathered edge till I get to the next notch. And I'm going to pin them together. There's a theme here, isn't there? <laughs> so then I'm going to go along this curve till I find the notch. And then I'm going to go along the gathered edge until I find the notch and I'm going to match. So everything is matched where I can match. And now I'm going to start with the gathering. So it's really difficult to show you this up close, but we have gathered before. I'm just going to choose where to start. And this is as good a place as any. So I've got my two reds and I'm just working between the pins. So I'm just doing a quarter at a time. There's no need to do any more because it can get confusing. She's just going to gently gather until the gathered skirt section is the same length as the section of the upper skirt, that's the one that's inside, that you're trying to match. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this gathering and pin some sections in place because then it's going to be much easier for you to see what I'm actually doing. So if you have a look and do the same if you feel you're able to. If not, when I come back, it will hopefully be clearer once we've got some pins together. So I'll be happy gathering until then. So I finished that first section. So hopefully you can see everything's flat on that side and this is gathered. So that's the first quarter. What that does is it gives you an indication as to how much gather you then need to do on the other quarters. So it should make it slightly easier going forward. I'm going to persevere and do the next three so that everything's pinned together. And then I'm going to show you where I'm at before we start stitching. Okay, so here we are with our pile of fabric again. But I promise it is all gathered. Can you see the gather? Onto that skirt. So hopefully you have something that looks a little bit like that. I'm going to bring you round to the machine and I'll show you how we're going to stitch that. And then we're not actually too far away, are we? I was going to pause and do some filming tomorrow, but I think the light's still okay for us. So I think I'll push on through and we'll get it done today. So let's get to the machine. Right, so we are back at our machine. I have my black thread ready to go and we are set at a two. 0.5 millimeter stitch length we are going to stitch this gather on the reason i wanted to do a little bit with you is because we've got this really strange curve underneath and we can easily get things caught so we're going to start as we always do with our back stitch and remember you're stitching sort of between the two red lines which makes it really handy but can you see this bit what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that out to the side and I'm going to constantly be checking that that's all nice and smooth. I'm watching this edge so that I don't lose the curve. And I'm going to be, there's going to be a lot of faffing here to make sure I'm not stitching anything together. Now, I may be exaggerating, or you may feel rather, that I'm exaggerating this little bit, checking under here. But I would say that, I don't know, 40% of the time, if I rush this, I do catch underneath. And then I have to go back and... Um, unpick and redo it. So I'm going to try and not do that today. Also, we're going to finish this seam, or rather, if you're going to finish this seam, 
more importantly, if you're going to finish it on an overlocker like I am, you need to be very careful that you have taken all of your pins out because pins have a habit of hiding in the gathers and it will break your overlocker. Again, speaking from experience, can you see now how this is trying to cause me a problem? And it's because we're at the point in the curve where it starts to curve this way. So just be ready for that. And it's those changes in the curve's direction that can easily catch you out and you can start catching things underneath. See here, everything's going awry. So let's pull that over. See how this is trying to peek under? If we're not keeping a check on that, we're going to end up stitching it incorrectly. Now I think I've laboured that point enough, so I'm going to leave you to do yours whilst I finish mine. I'm then going to finish this edge and then you can meet me at the ironing board where we'll take out all of the gathers and we'll press our seams up towards the upper skirt. See you in a more. Okay, so one of the first things that we can do is to get rid of the gather stitch. Now you should be able to pull the red stitch in all the way out or at least until it snaps. It will snap before it damages your fabric unless you've used really strong thread. So just be wary of that. So we're going to take all of the red out. It's only really truly important for the thread that's below your stitch line. The one that's in the seam allowance doesn't really matter. because it's just above and not bothering anybody. So let's take all of that out. So hopefully you can see that's disappeared on that side. Let's take this one. Just gonna take enough so that I can show you how to do your pressing and then we can uh, both do it in our own time as it were. So, what it says is it wants you to press your seam up towards the skirt. Now, you can see it's naturally wanting to do that anyway. But what helps is if you just pull the top here and press up like that with steam. Because what you're also doing is pressing those pleats too. So, nice and steady. So you're going to move the skirt round, remove all of those um, temporary stitches for your gather and press everything up. Then I want you to turn it the right way round and give it a press from that side and you'll see it change dramatically actually. It'll start to fall really nicely. Now our next step is to attach the bodice to the skirt. So if you meet me back at the table with your bodice that should be hung up nicely somewhere and your skirt, we can get going with that. I imagine you are slightly gathered out by now, but there is one last bit of gathering to do. It's not as intense as the gathering that you've just done, but it is needed in order to connect the uh, top and bottom of your dress together. Um, more gather will be needed if you change sizes from top and bottom etc but there is a little bit of gather regardless of any changes that you may or may not have made. So the first thing that we're going to do at our waistband you can see there where's the gap that's where we've got our waistband um, casing so we're up at the top end of our skirt we are going to do a gather stitch from side seam to side seam at the front and then side seam to side seam at the back so i have my red thread in again i'm at four and a half um, millimeter seam allowance 
and we're going to go for it. So we're going to do a row at 10 and then a row at 2. Okay, so you know how to do this by now. I just wanted to show you the location. So I'm going to start and I'll see you with some space and all of your fronts and backs together and we can get attaching. Okay, so all of my gather stitch is done to the top edge of the skirt. The skirt is inside out and this is the front of the skirt, but it is inside out. I've retrieved my beautiful bodice and that's the right way round. I've got the front facing upwards and I'm just going to feed it between the two. So sleeves and everything can go in there. I'm then going to take the side seams of my bodice and match them with the side seams of my skirt and pin and then I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side and pin. So the bodice and the skirt are right sides together and the bodice is inside the skirt in here. You'll then see there's not a huge amount of gather that needs to be done. Can I hold that up so you can see? You see that's the lower bit there, it's got to be gathered in. So there's not a massive amount to do, but it does need doing. So I'm going to let you gather those two edges in. You can pin it all the way around here then. All gathered evenly and beautifully. And then we can attach the two. I'm going to leave you to do the gathering and I'm going to leave you to do the attaching because it is just a straight line of stitching at your one and a half centimetre seam allowance with a stitch length of 2.5. So it's exactly the same as what we've just done on that bottom part of the skirt, but actually without as much gather involved. So you'll be absolutely fine with that. Then you're going to finish that seam. I would recommend finishing that seam because it is going to rub up against um, your body as you wear it. So it'd be nice if it was a bit more robust. And then we're going to press that seam up towards the bodice. So once you've done that, uh, I will see you here with your ties. Last pieces, guys. You're doing so well. See you in a bit. We are so close now, guys. We've just got the ties to do and to thread the ties through the uh, waist casing. So here's our tie. We folded it right sides together. And the first thing I'm going to do is go across the top edge. Now we are on a straight stitch at two and a half, uh, sorry, two and a half millimetres. And I'm just going to stitch all the way across. I think we're being joined by a cat. Yep. <laughs> hey, Johnny. And then we're going to stitch all the way down this edge. Now, I don't think you need to see me go all the way down the edge, but I will join you when I've finished and I'll show you where we're going to trim and how we're going to turn it the right way around. Okay, so there we go. We are going to snip the corner here and reduce that bit. And then we're going to trim all the way down this edge as well. So probably we're going to trim it by half all the way down. Then you can probably see I have an old knitting needle knitting needle next to me. There are lots of things you can use. There are um, tube turners, all sorts of things that you can buy. But I thought I would show you how to use a good old fashioned knitting needle to do the job. Now, you can only use this method if you have stitched across the short edge. If it's just a tube that you're turning, the knitting needle method won't work. Okay, so the knack of it is in the beginning. So uh, this is the end that we stitched across. I'm just going to try and turn a little bit of it in 
so that I can then put it on the blunt end of your needle. It's important that it's the blunt end because otherwise you're going to pop through this seam. Now, this first bit is always the hardest bit, but I promise once you get it started, you are plain sailing. The problem that I have is the camera's at the wrong angle. So just forgive me whilst I move. It's really difficult to do things in front of the camera when the camera is between your eyes and the thing that you're doing. <laughs> As I'm discovering. One second. Sorry to do it off camera. I will show you the end result though. There we go. So I've just put the end of the knitting needle in there. The point is actually now on my tummy, so I'm not going to give it too much pressure. And I'm just going to pull it over. Now the trick is you don't get loads of bunched up fabric here, because if you do, it becomes really difficult for one to slide over the other. So you want to keep going until your needle pops out of the other end. So I'm just pulling it down. And I think you can see here, the needle's popped out. Whilst the needle's in, I'm just gonna press all of those corners into shape. I can pull my needle out so it looks like this now. And then from the bottom, I can pull it over itself. See if I pull too much, I get like a knot that I can't get over. So don't do that, just a little bit at a time. I know we're at the end of the project and we're all eager to be finished, but just take your time. Okay, we're gonna press this now and then attach it to our elastic. You do have another one of these to do actually. So you need to do two of these, give them a good old press and then I'll show you how to attach it to elastic before we thread it through. So Johnny just joined us up there, making it rather awkward for this next bit, but I'm hoping you can see here. So we're gonna keep this flat and we're gonna keep rolling this seam here. So sometimes if you just dampen your fingers, Disgusting, I know, but if you just dampen your fingers, it does help you to roll it. Now, my fabric just needs me to linger a little while with the iron for it to set. Yours may or may not, but you're just going to keep pressing all the way along until you're happy with your nice flat piece. Okay, so you can see how that's now nice and flat. I'm going to continue. I'm going to move the camera because I think Johnny's going to end up having steam up his bum if he doesn't move. Uh, and then I'll see you back at the machine and we'll attach that little bit of elastic. So the elastic needs to be a quarter of your waist measurement long. And that's your natural waist that I'm looking for. So I'll join you when you've got two ties beautifully pressed along with that piece of elastic. See you in a minute. So we need your machine set at a zigzag stitch and we're simply gonna zigzag your elastic on. So just goes Do you know my fingers aren't working? So you're going to overlap by about two centimetres. You're going to pop it in the centre of your tie, and then with a zigzag stitch, you're going to, excuse me, you're going to zigzag down and then back up. You're going to do this a couple of times because this is going to take some strain and stress when we're tying it on our waist so really do give it a couple of up, up and downs with your zigzag stitch this is all going to be hidden inside your waist casing so it's not going to be a problem it doesn't really matter how messy it looks as you can see i have the other one attached at the other side 
we need a safety pin and then we're going to thread it through our waistband and that is our last part of the sewing project guys so well done you for getting this far i absolutely can't wait to flounce in this for you because i'm loving how the fabric is coming together but let me turn you around and for those of you who've never threaded um sorry i just got got by a pin uh, for those of you who have never used a safety pin to thread elastic or ribbon i'm going to show you how to do it okay so this is the elastic through my tie i'm going to put that through the gap in the casing i'm going to make sure the tie goes through the hole i'm going to take a hold of the bottom of that safety pin and then i'm going to push the rest of the fabric over the safety pin and then i'm going to take a hold of the top let go of the bottom and pull then repeat the whole process so i'm hold of the bottom gathering all the fabric over i'm going to take a hold of the top let go of the bottom and pull the fabric through we're going to do that all the way around until we get back to where we started. So essentially this tie will come out of the hole again, but from the opposite direction. You can then just pull it all through so it's even and that elastic sits at the back of your uh, project so it can't be seen. I'm going to then give this one good last press. I'm going to get rid of any of my gather stitches that are still visible um any of my loose threads so that it looks its best and then we're going to have our ta-da moment so i'm going to carry on threading this through and i shall see you when hopefully i'm looking a little bit glamorous in my new dress can i just say i absolutely love this i love the color um tony at tlc colors will be so proud of me for using these colours. Anyway, I digress. I love it. I love the round neck. I think it gives a real different dimension to the dress. So it's got the lovely tie here and it's all swishy. You do like a good old swish. My sleeves are just perfect. What I've always loved about this dress is that, yes, it's got that flexibility here at the waist, but it's not huge across my hips. So it's quite, kind of quite slimming when it comes to that location. And it's not got a huge amount of bag here because it tapers in to the waist. Um, and my God, I absolutely love those sleeves. The fabric just drapes beautifully at that point. You can see there how the back opens. So it should just cover up uh, your uh, bra strap I think it just about covered up my bra strap um but you can adjust that if you want to because god that's the reason we do this isn't it so I hope you like mine I do love mine I'm sure you're going to see this on social media sometime soon um but I want to see yours I see mine all the time and I get a bit bored of seeing them I want to see you in all of your glory I want to see you flouncing I want to see you posing I want you showing it off it's really really important to me that I represent so these serene um patterns are an increased size range for me and I really want to see all of that size range being represented so if you feel that you can share it use the hashtag give me a comment send it privately if you like but it's really important to me that i see how it fits on all of the bodies yes it's been tested but nobody has the same body do we guys so i really really would love to see it so in the meantime enjoy flouncing in your serene dress and hopefully i'll see you in a tutorial soon all right guys take care bye